have you ever walked into a room and felt a sense of heaviness or sadness for no outwardly apparent reason? Or felt a surge of gratitude and joy when you woke up and then noticed how everything seemed to magically flow and work in your favor throughout the rest of the day? These are great examples of energy in motion, e-motion. It's the vibrational frequency you're sensing that permeates through the space around you. When you're not conscious or aware of the energy you're allowing into your life, however, it's easy to create results you don't want. Dr. Joan Borsenko, cell biologist and licensed psychologist, says that our physical perceptions turn into behaviors or beliefs which then affect which genetic markers turn on or off in our body. In other words, our bodies convert environmental signals into biological effects. Many people want to navigate life with peace and joy, but struggle to connect to their intuition. They find themselves overwhelmed, burned out, and frustrated. My name is Francesca Phillips, and I'm obsessed with spirituality and psychology and how the two can intersect to help you live a successful and intuitive life. I believe each of us can accomplish amazing things through balance and healthy habits instead of burnout. Consider this your go-to resource for where spiritual wellness and mindful productivity meets practical wisdom. If you're craving positivity and want to know how to find the answers within, instead of searching endlessly without, then you're in the right place. Get ready to feel supported and inspired. This is the Good Space Podcast. You're listening to the Good Space Podcast, episode number 25, what it means to be in vibrational alignment. Before we dive in, I want to give my warm appreciation to our reviewer of the week, J.B. Ellis, and they say, It's refreshing to listen to a podcast that breaks down theories into small and easily consumable portions. The episodes are easy to listen to on a break and are like bite-sized treats for the mind and soul. Thank you so much, J.B. Ellis, for sharing your kind words, and I love how you describe the show as a bite-sized treat for the mind and soul. So clever. If you want to be highlighted in an upcoming episode and help further the mission of The Good Space, make sure to subscribe and give us a review on Apple Podcasts so I can then highlight your review in an upcoming episode. It only takes a minute. You can pause the episode and come right back. Make sure to screenshot this episode on your phone and tag us on your Instagram story at findyourgoodspace, hashtag the good space, to let me know that you're joining in today, as you know that I love to share those screenshots on our stories too. If you're afraid to unearth something within you or have a creative longing, but don't know how to let it out, then I invite you to join my creative connection group. It's a writing group. That's a sacred space for you to work on your creative expression and get positive, constructive feedback from others in the group. This is for beginner and professional writers alike. All are encouraged to join. So to learn more, go to bit.ly slash join creative connection. It'll also be linked in the show notes. So just a little bit more about the meetings itself. I'll lead each session with a spiritual thought and provide writing prompts. Then you can read what you wrote to the group who then shares what was most memorable or strong. Whether you have a book you're working on or need to release some stress, this group is perfect for letting your voice come out. There is one guideline everyone must follow. Anything shared is treated as fiction. That way you and others can feel safe sharing without worrying about judgment. This group is meant to help you feel seen and heard, to find your voice, to give you the space to test out ideas, to grow as a human and creative. If your soul resonates with this message even a little, please click the link in the show notes and join us now. With everything that's happened in 2020, I'm sure you've heard terms like energetic shift being thrown around or that it's important to get vibrationally aligned. But what does that really mean? After COVID-19, you probably felt the collective energy change around you. And like it or not, we all create energy and take it in from objects and people alike. Today, I'm hoping to shed some light on this foundational concept and hope it brings you clarity you need to start having an energetic practice that makes you feel more fulfilled. Vibrational energy is a complex, curious topic. And regardless of your current beliefs, you may be willing to admit there's more to life than we interpret with our physical senses. Think of a time you knew an event that was going to happen before it did, or thought about a cute dog like a corgi and one passes by you moments later. There's a reason things like this happen, and my goal with this is to share what I've been learning in case it guides you to answers you're looking for, or at least crack open the door to your curiosity. All right, let's get into alignment 101. First things first, let's clarify what we mean by alignment. I have air quotes in case you can't see me, which I know you can't. 
Um, we're not talking about car alignment or back alignment here. We're talking about vibrational alignment. More specifically, being in vibrational alignment through your emotions with the energy of who you are. I'll repeat that. Being in vibrational alignment through your emotions with the energy of who you really are. So I've talked in previous episodes and posts and whatnot about the difference between the personality and the soul. The soul being who you really are, the divine expansive version of yourself. And the personality is the more limited, more contained version of the soul because you wouldn't be able to live on earth otherwise if you were just in your full soul glory. So this is just how we navigate the earth, the physical realm. And so being in vibrational alignment means that you use your emotions to connect to that soul level of who you really are. So hopefully that clarifies that sentence a little bit. I thought it was just so important. Um, and it was something that really like resonated with me as well. So emotions or emotions are literally energy in motion. We can choose which energetic frequencies we want to tune into and radiate ones like sadness and anger, which are low frequency peace and joy, which are high frequency and everything in between. Every form of matter vibrates at a certain frequency. If you choose joy, compassion, and love, you'll attract people, things, and situations with the same frequency. For example, you meet a stranger on the train that ultimately helps you land your dream job, or someone holds open the door for you, or you find unexpected money flowing into your life. Whatever you're focused upon seems to magically arrive without effort. On the other hand, if you choose anger, sadness, or guilt, you'll attract people, things, and situations that match. You might feel stuck or like it's an uphill battle to get anything in your life to feel right. You feel resistance and a contraction of energy as if life's closing in on you. Just like you can't tune into a specific radio station without shifting the dial on the radio to the same frequency as the station, you can't manifest your desires without shifting your emotional frequency to that of your higher, most receptive self. In other words, you can't tune into love, joy, and peace without first raising your energetic vibration. And if you want to see a visual that outlines common emotions and their associated vibrational frequency, make sure to look at our show notes. I have a graph there and I'll try to explain it a little bit. Um, so it's basically like a cone shape where the bottom is pointed and, and more contracted like a triangle, like the tip of a triangle. And then as you go up, it expands, 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 and then it gets wider and wider. And so the idea being, if you're towards the bottom where it's more pointed and closed, you're contracted. And then the higher you go, the more expanded you become. And so at the bottom in the contracted area, emotions like shame, guilt, apathy, grief, those have a lower frequency and are given. So like if we were thinking of it as a number system, right? 20, 30, 50, those are all lower number, lower type emotions. And then as you go up, you'll start hitting emotions like neutrality, willingness, acceptance, reason. And then the top, top emotions are like love, joy, peace, enlightenment. And so enlightenment is like 700 and plus. Peace is like 600. Joy is 540. So imagine 540, 600 joy and peace compared to guilt and shame, which are 30 and 20. So the numbers on this diagram are really useful because rather than having to look at an emotion and the word of it, you can just use numbers to kind of gauge, oh yeah, that one is way higher on the frequency than the other one. It's really, really cool. So make sure you check it out. Let's talk a little bit about the biology behind belief. I'm going to give you two scenarios here. Have you ever walked into a room and felt a sense of heaviness or sadness for no outwardly apparent reason? Or felt a surge of gratitude and joy when you woke up and then noticed how everything seemed to magically flow and work in your favor throughout the rest of the day? These are great examples of energy in motion, e-motion. It's the vibrational frequency you're sensing that permeates through the space around you. When you're not conscious or aware of the energy you're allowing into your life, however, it's easy to create results you don't want. Dr. Joan Borsenko, cell biologist and licensed psychologist, says that our physical perceptions turn into behaviors or beliefs which then affect which genetic markers turn on or off in our body. In other words, our bodies convert en environmental signals into biological effects. When I discovered this idea that we can feel and sense energy, that objects and people have energy, it started to click for me 
when I would go into certain situations and didn't understand why I suddenly felt sad or heavy. And then, you know, I did have those days where I woke up feeling so happy and aligned and everything just worked out and flowed and I didn't have to dry anything. And it's really cool to know that our bodies are these mechanisms that can sense that and subconsciously will react to it. And we really take a lot of cues from our body and the physical sensations and emotions that we feel. So allowing ourselves the ability to not make it so subconscious anymore, but to really be aware of the emotions and the feelings and and almost like work with it, it makes it almost that much more powerful because we have a conscious, powerful ability to create the life and the type of experience that we want to experience. Okay, so let's talk about how to quickly move from lower to higher vibrations. Biologically, our body doesn't know the difference between the thought of an event happening and when an event actually happens. It physiologically processes the thought exactly as it would the actual event. And this is good news for us because an easy way to raise our vibration is to act as if. In fact, this method is so effective, there's a renowned principle that refers to it. The as if principle by William James. This principle suggests that when we act as if we already are, we become just that. This tactic can be successfully applied to all sorts of things, including our emotional state. Using the as if principle, we can act as if we're in a peak high vibrational state and then observe how everything around us aligns with it. Having said this, I know it can be difficult to make the vibrational leap from lower frequencies to higher ones. And so I have a shortcut for you to move up the ladder to higher vibrations. Start by completing this simple statement. I like the feeling of repeat this over and over in your mind or write it down, filling in the blank with different things you enjoy. For example, I like the feeling of peace. I like the feeling of financial freedom. I like the feeling of walking through the halls of my beautiful home and so on. Just like you can't tune into a specific radio station without shifting the dial on the radio to the same frequency as the station, you can't manifest your desires without shifting your emotional frequency to that of your higher, most receptive self. And the thing I like about this method of, I like the feeling of peace, financial freedom, joy, it's almost a reminder to yourself and like a trigger to your body. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's peace, there's financial freedom. These things exist even if I don't feel it and it and it moves your focus to those things. And your body doesn't like cognitive dissonance. It doesn't like feeling the opposite of what you believe. And so it will do anything in its power to align with the thing that you're feeling or experiencing mentally. And so it's a really cool trick. And it's, yeah, just overall a cool thing. Now let's talk about how to consistently tune into higher vibrations. Another way you can support yourself in attaining higher frequency emotions is by activating consistent positive habits in your life. When you do so, you create a consistent, calmer inner life and can more consistently access emotions like joy and peace. When you allow yourself to have the environment to bring these into your life, it just becomes easier and more effortless. So here are a few ways that I prime myself to tune in better. Of course, you might have guessed already, but a morning routine, this is a free an immediate way to go from surviving to thriving. There's literally no better way to set yourself up for success than to direct your energy first thing in the morning. If you want to jumpstart on creating one, make sure to download my free morning routine guide now. The link is in my bio. It has helped so many people and just from all walks of life, they've downloaded the workbook, they've done the work, and then they come back to me saying how much freedom they feel, how much more in tune and connected they feel. This literally is the best way. And it doesn't even have to be long. I usually spend about an hour now because I've worked my way up to it. And I literally cannot go on without my morning routine. Like I, it just helps me in so many ways, but, um, you can start with 10 minutes, 15 minutes. There was a single dad who found my guide and he said he was drowning under the weight of work and just taking care of his two girls literally woke up took them to school, worked for 12 hours, fell asleep, did the same thing. And he said that when he realized he could just do a 15 minute morning routine, he already felt more empowered. He felt more fulfilled and he finally felt like he had something for himself. And it really, you could just tell that he felt so much better. So start a morning routine. Then the other thing that helps me to prime myself to tune into higher emotions better is meditation. 
meditation activates the alpha state of the brain, which is similar to a hallucinatory state. Your mental blocks fall away and high energy emotions can flow to you unhindered. Headspace is a great way to dip your toe into the waters of meditation. All you need to start is 10 minutes and a love for British accents. That's literally all it took for me to get started and I have not looked back. (laughs) Journaling is another way that I prime myself to tune in better. Every morning, I write three pages stream of consciousness to satiate the ego, get it out of the way so I can do my important work like writing with fewer obstacles. When I'm feeling lower energies, I'll write a question at the top of my page, then write whatever comes out. Usually, I get an insightful, powerful answer from my higher self and feel elevated by the time I'm done writing. Reading books. What you consume affects how you feel. I like to read books like Ask and It Is Given by Abraham Hicks and other mindful topics so I can continue growing to higher states of living. They give me hope and a new way of thinking, which raises my vibration and ability to process difficult times. This also kind of goes back to the five people you hang out with. You're the average of those five people. And it's the same, what you're reading, what you're eating, what you are consuming in any form or medium is the average of who you are. So the more leverage and proactiveness that you can give yourself, the better and easier it is to get those higher emotions. Another way is watching videos. Again, this touches on the statement of what you consume affects how you feel. I like videos that talk about alignment and often find other mystical and educational content on YouTube. And the last but definitely not final is stretching and yoga. Negative emotions can stay stagnant inside of your body when they're not processed correctly. They can often manifest as pains, aches, and other ailments because, again, everything has an energy and thoughts have energy. And if you don't actually give it the attention it deserves and release it, then it gets trapped. And the only thing the body can do is stick it somewhere. And it's not meant to just be stuck somewhere. And so you start feeling pains. So making sure that you're moving is important. I've worked from home for the last four years and have learned ways to give my energy a constant reboot. So I make sure to move and stretch every hour, which helps recalibrate and restore your energy. Even if you only do a morning routine and 10 minutes of meditation a day, you're setting yourself up to feel more peace and handle situations better. So I really challenge you this week to think of the emotions that you're regularly feeling right now. Like, where are you starting? Do you feel negative? apathy, which means no emotion? Do you feel guilty? Do you feel anger? Like, where are you starting? And then from there, figure out, okay, what's the next best emotion? Like what could, how could I move up the ladder of vibrational frequency and download that picture that I have in the show notes where it literally gives you the list of emotions. And also um, there's a book by Hawkins. I forgot his first name. I think it's David power versus force. And he goes even more into vibrational alignment Um, so that's another good resource, but see what the next best emotion is that you want to get to. And more importantly, remember being in vibrational alignment through your emotions with the energy of who you really are. Focus on those emotions that create the bridge between you and the energy of who you really are. Now it's time for an affirmation. I am in vibrational alignment with my higher, most receptive self. I am in vibrational alignment with my higher, most receptive self. If you found today's tips inspiring or thought-provoking, share it right now on social media and make sure to tag me at Francesca A. Phillips or at Find Your Good Space and also weigh in in the comment section at findyourgoodspace.com. You can find links in the show notes. And if you have a spiritual or mindfulness problem that you want me to unpack on an upcoming The Good Space episode or an awesome manifesting story you want to share, give my podcast phone line a ring right now at 917-719-0867. Also, don't forget to download my free morning routine guide. It's what helped me reduce my anxiety, increase productivity, and so much more. The link to everything I mentioned is in the show notes. See you soon.